Hello everyone and welcome to your Glassnow video report for the 18th of February. So we have seen even more weakness in the Bitcoin market today. We sold off just below 40,000 this morning and have recently recovered and we're hovering about 40,100. So the market really is trying to hang into that $40,000 level. And what we're going to assess today is a bit of a narrative around the short-term holders. And we're going to use on-chain data to really understand, are they actually the ones being shaken out? We've talked about this in previous videos that the short-term holders are coins that are younger than 155 days, and they are statistically the most likely to be spending in panic when we get some kind of volatility, particularly to the downside. So let's jump into our analysis and we'll start building up this thesis as to whether this is actually a short-term holder shakeout. So you may have heard that we've got this long-term and short-term holder concept at Glassnode. And really this is based on some fairly robust statistics where we're looking at what is the probability that a coin gets spent. So if you think about it, and you may have experienced this yourself, do you remember the cost basis, what the price was of the coin that you bought five months ago, six months ago, a year ago? Those numbers tend to fade into human memory. So generally, when we call long-term holders, it makes sense that those probabilities of coins being spent, if you can't remember your cost basis, you're less li likely to react to the next daily candle, up or down. Now, the other side of the equation is people who withdrew their coins yesterday and then see the price fall are more likely to panic sell that very same coin. And likewise, they may withdraw the coin, they see a very, very nice green candle, and they say, you know what, I'm going to take profit on that. So these short-term holder coins are representative of those that are the most likely to spend. So as a result, what we're going to look at in this session is, first, we're going to look at the spending behavior overall in aggregate. We're then going to identify why it is that the short-term holders are the ones we're going to pay attention to. We're going to compare that to our long-term holder cohort and just look at the differences between their behaviors. And then we're going to close out by looking at the profitability on two fronts of the short-term holder cohort. The first one is their unrealized gains. This is the profit they hold on the coins that have not been spent. And we're also going to look at the coins that they are spending to try and assess whether they are in fact being shaken out during this next move down. So just before we get into the analysis, please do give us a subscribe and a like. It really does help this channel get to more eyeballs. Uh, we're trying to you know, really show you how to use these tools, explore different concepts, and really help you kind of solidify these ideas about how we can use on-chain analysis to really prove or verify or at least get some estimation about what's going on in the space using the data that's embedded within the Bitcoin ledger. So I hope that you're enjoying these videos. Do give us a like and a subscribe. It really does help the channel. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna start with the very big picture and we're gonna start with what is going on on chain at the moment. So there's two metrics here that I've got shown, which is the realized profit and realized loss. And I like to use these in combination. And I also like to use them with a seven day moving average and exponential. So the exponential moving average tries to weight what happened yesterday more than the day before and that day before that. So it kind of shows you where you've got these spikes in activity and it's more weighted towards what happened recently. Now, the reason I look at these in combination. So if we think about the short term holder basis, we're talking about five months they are all accumulated within this recent correction on the rally up and then on the rally down from the all-time high or the sell-off from the all-time high. So we're talking about people who are kind of within this fairly grim price action. We've been in this correction for over three months now. So there's a lot of short-term holders that are gonna be underwater in aggregate. So that means that most of the coins that are profitable are those that have come from an earlier time period. They're those that are more likely to be long-term holders. So we've almost got this bifurcation of the market where most of the long-term holders are in profit and almost all of the short-term holders are in a loss. And what we can see here, now mind you, this spike here is actually anomalous. This is because of the Bitfinex coins that moved the other day. So there was an increase in profitability at the bottom and that's because those very old coins came back to life. But you can see that overall, we've had a declining amount of profits being realized, which is speaking to those who have those profitable coins spending less of them, which you could argue is a form of conviction. And we talked about this in, in the week on chain this week, where we talk about what is the probability that people are actually using derivatives and options and futures to hedge their risk rather than selling spot. So we talk about that dynamic in that video, and I'd recommend going and checking that out if you haven't seen it yet. Now, on the other side of the coin, we have our realized losses. Now, where realized profits typically happen near the top because people are taking profit and that puts supply back in and we establish a top, we typically see the exact opposite behavior in realized losses. Whereas during these big sell-off events, one here on the 4th of December, and then another one here when we sold down to 33 and a half thousand the other week, 
This is where we get these large scale capitulation events. People panic and buy all the way down. People who bought the top get flushed out at the lows. This is a very common behavior we see overall. Now, even with that said, you can see that our realized profit is declining and our realized loss is declining. So that's speaking to not a great deal of coin volume is actually on the move, realizing either profit or loss, which is quite interesting. So then we move to our number of active addresses. So we've now established, okay, there's not a great deal of coin volume moving at the moment. So I wonder if on-chain is actually showing us that there's anything going on. Is it actually because of people sending coins and panicking and selling into exchange or not? And what we can see is that our active entities is still very, very low. So this really is in a bear market period. We can see this is clearly a bull. We're getting rising activity, more people coming in on-chain, rally after rally. And then we started to have a real slowdown. Note that our price made higher highs at the same time as our activity was slowing down. This is a bearish divergence. And we can see the dramatic sell-off and the collapse in overall activity after the May sell-off. And this was really a period where a great number of people who came just for the hype and the speculation, they more or less left the building. So it's a very, very quiet period. And really, in terms of on-chain activity, puts us into this kind of bear market channel that we've been for some time now. Now we had a very, very slight recovery naturally alongside price. Some people get more excited, but you can see we got nowhere near the peaks we had in the uh, in the bull phase. And it really does speak to where we are at the moment. Uh, we're almost at the bottom of this channel. So there's not a great deal of demand coming in at the same time. So not only do we have very little spending going on, realizing profit or loss, it's also very quiet in terms of new people coming in. And you could argue that's probably not a great sign in terms of overall demand. We're not seeing an influx of new users to the system. Now, the next thing we can look at is our number of addresses with a non-zero balance. Now, the reason I like to look at this is it just shows me the macro trend of our people coming in or going out of the system. Generally speaking, during more bullish periods, we want to see more and more UTXOs, more people accumulating, just generally more people with a balance, more addresses, more dollar cost averaging. That's the, that's the type of thing we want to see. Now, note that this is not a straight line. It goes up and down. It's wavy like lots of these metrics. But see how we had a somewhat dramatic drop over the last couple of days. Now, these are people who are clearing out their entire address. Now, again, this doesn't show the balance of those coins. And we can see here by the realized profit and loss, they probably weren't carrying a huge amount of volume, these coins that were spent. But overall, what we don't want to see is this turn around and start to decline, as we saw here in the period up to May. These are people who are clearing out their balance, and we get a reduction in overall UTXOs in the system. And as a result, that essentially means that there's more coins coming back into circulation that must be absorbed. So what we would like to see here is this stabilize and ideally start to head higher again, alongside activity really starting to climb. Now, if we start to see this roll over and start trending down, that's probably telling us the other story, that perhaps we are seeing a little bit of a loss in confidence. So this is a metric that we can certainly be paying attention to. Um, this is an advanced metric. And for the active entities, whilst this is a tier three metric, this can just as easily be substituted in for the number of active addresses. So that's another approach. And I typically have around a 14 or a seven day EMA applied for those just to kind of smooth out the noise, but still amplify what's been going on in the last couple of days. So now we're going to look at our realized cap hodl waves. Now what this metric does is it breaks down the coin supply from 0 to 100% based on the amount of value that's stored in each age. So the other way to think about this, look at every coin that's moved in the supply and assign the price when it was last spent. Now, obviously, the coins that Satoshi owns had no price. So you can see that the 10-year-old band is very, very small. In fact, you can't even see it on this particular chart. These green colors were coins that were accumulated two or three years ago at prices that were a couple of thousand dollars, 6,000, 8,000. So on a relative scale, they're actually quite small. And that's because lots of these coins were accumulated at 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars. So they hold a lot more value in these younger coin ages. Now these warmer pinks down the bottom here is showing coins that are relatively young. We're talking about one day, one week, one month, up to three and six months. So really our short-term holders are in these orange colors. And then our longer-term holders are up in these darker colors. 
And what we can see is that these uptrends that typically occur during bull markets, these are older coins being spent. They're being transferred to new holders who are more likely to be new to the market and more likely to sell. That's that short-term holder cohort. So typically speaking, uptrends in this metric is showing that supply is coming back into circulation and there's new holders. Downtrend is showing that accumulation and hodling because it's showing those younger coins are coming out of circulation into long-term holder hands where they start to mature. So we can see we had this uptrend in the first phase of the bull. We had the downtrend as we started to form this topping pattern. And we really went into some seriously deep hodling behavior as we had the May, June, July sell-off. And this was a period of large-scale accumulation. Most of the people who purchased at the top distributed their coins down to lows. And we had this softening out of these metrics. Now, as we had our rally from August through to November, you can see we almost had a miniature cycle. Some of those coins were spent, they started to mature through the older bands, and then we moved back into a downtrend. Now, we've seen a very, very slight uptick recently, and that's showing that some of those coins have come back into circulation. However, note the very small uptick, and you could even include this as a small uptick relative to our bull. That's showing that most of the coins haven't actually been valued to a overly different price. And that makes sense because overall, over the last 12 months or more, we've actually traded between 69,000 and 30,000. 60,000, 30,000. So we're trading in that same range and it almost makes sense that the coins that are moving are going to be actually relatively close to their cost basis. So it's really showing that the same supply is almost circulating amongst different holders. There's not a great deal of change in terms of the makeup of the supply, particularly on an age basis. And we can actually more or less confirm this by looking at our three cohorts, our long-term, our short-term, and then our balance on exchanges. So just for those in the audience, long-term holder plus short-term holder supply plus balance on exchanges equals circulating. So the long-term and the short-term holder supply does not include exchange balances. But when you add the three together, you will more or less get circulating supply. So with our long-term holder cohort, note that we've more or less been trading sideways. There's not been a great deal of change in their overall supply balance. So after a very significant period of accumulation through the back half of 2021, as is tradition when we hit all-time high, they started their spending. But the weakness in price actually, see how they reverse course? They stopped spending their coins. So we've actually seen more or less every coin that goes into long-term holder supply is being matched by the coins coming out feels like an equilibrium. There's not really a macro change in overall long-term holder supply, which is why we're focusing more on the short-term holder cohort. Because when a coin is spent out of long-term holder status, it either goes into short-term holders or it goes into exchanges. So at the moment, seeing this equilibrium tells us that they're probably not the main source of this spending. Now, the short-term holders have seen a very, very slight uptick, roughly equivalent to the downtick in long-term holder supply. But overall, it's more or less trading sideways. Again, it's in that equilibrium. So the coins that are short-term holder are more or less staying there. They're being retransacted. They're changing hands. People are buying the dip, and then it turns out it wasn't the last dip, so then they're selling again. And then someone is buying it, and then they're going through this almost oscillation behavior, which you can see in the balance on exchanges. For every coin that goes in, a week later, those coins have come out. For every coin that goes in, they're coming back out. And we're getting this chopped sideways in the overall exchange balance. Now, one thing to note is that this behavior, it's chopping around sideways, but you can see that on net, we really haven't changed much supply since September. Whereas this is very different to May. The May, June, July period, we had around 164,000 BTC flow in on net, and this took quite some time for the hodlers to absorb. So it's a very, very different behavior to what we saw back then. This is a much more fearful period. This is lots of people panicking and leaving the market completely, as we saw in our reduction in non-zero balances and the complete collapse of new entities coming in. Here, this speaks to hodlers. The hodlers are in the market. They're continuing to stack sats. The long-term holders are more or less hanging onto their supply. And most of the trading activity is really coins going in and out trading daily price action. So that's a little bit more about what's going on. And it really shows us that the long, the short-term holders sorry, are the most likely transactors at the moment. It's very, very quiet on most of the other fronts. 
And we can see this in our exchange net flows. You can see it's in this oscillatory behavior. It's trending up, then it's trending down. We had a slight inflow the other day just before this sell-off, which has now corrected back down into an outflow. So what that's really telling us is that more or less, this looks like the same short-term holders transacting amongst themselves. It's almost a bit of an internal equilibrium for want of a better term, where long-term holders aren't doing a great deal, exchange balances are more or less staying flat over the macro term, and it's really just day-to-day -day noise as short-term holders move coins in and out. So with all of that said, the last thing that we have to look at is what is the probability that we're actually going to get another short-term holder capitulation? And generally speaking, those type of events can happen and they can accompany some fairly angry price action to the downside. We saw this in March 2020 as an example where things can get very, very violent to the downside as holders capitulate. Now, the flip side of that is that quite often those style of events typically put in some kind of bottom, whether it's a local bottom or a global bottom. And let's just quickly jump back up to our realized loss chart. We can see that these typically correlate with local lows before at the very least some kind of rally. We can see that this capitulation here at the 33.5 level resulted in a pushback up to 44,000. And we saw two such events. We had the, the sell-off down to 29,000 where a great number of coins were liquidated at the bottom. And then we had a number of weeks of bouncing higher. Likewise, as we traded down to 29,000, we had a second capitulation event. Uh, and you can see here that even after these events, we can still have downside price action. So it's absolutely not a signal of a bottom, but it generally after a period of losses, particularly once it's flushed out all last sellers, eventually it gets to the point where there are no sellers left. Now, what we're looking at here is two sets of metrics. We've got our MVRV and our NUPL, which are similar in their construction. They're looking at the unspent coins held by short-term holders. So all of the coins that are in their wallet, how profitable are they? And what we can see is that both of these metrics are currently trading under their cost basis. MVRV is trading below a value of one and our NUPL is trading below a value of zero. So we can see that they're in a fair amount of pain right now. They're on aggregate of all of the short-term holders, they are holding on average lost coins. So they are currently sitting under their cost basis and we can see it started curling back over again. So that's telling us that they're increasingly at a loss. Now, the other thing we can look at is see the power of this move, how quickly this recovered off very, very small price action. When, what, what is going on during this period are short-term holders are buying the bottom. They're in the process of accumulating down here. And then when price rallies, all of the coins that were purchased in this trading range suddenly return to profit. So we see a large increase in the aggregate amount of coins in profit and the overall coins at a loss reduce substantially. Now, we've seen this same impact where we almost got back to our break-even level. Now, what we can see is that we had a pullback after that. The market tested their conviction. And what we really want to see is it push back up to higher highs and the short-term holders hang on to their coins and essentially not be scared out of their positions. So we're having a very similar event. We've had that initial break into profitability and then it's pulled back. And the question is, are those short-term holders going to sell their coins and panic, which will create further sell side? Or are they actually going to hang on to their coins and potentially help put in a bottom? So that's the unrealized gains or the unspent coins. So to really answer that last question, we're going to look at our short-term holder, SOPA. So whilst these are looking at the coins that they hold in their wallet, how profitable are the unspent gains or losses? The SOPA is looking at of the coins that did get spent, did they realize a profit or a loss? We can see during a bull, it typically trades above one. This is short-term holders who are realizing profits. And we can see when it comes back and retests their cost basis, they're typically stepping in and buying the dip. So we get these pullbacks to one and it typically bounces on that level. Now, we also get these periods where it's more bearish and we actually pull down below a value of one, meaning that all of the coins that are being spent by short-term holders on average are being spent at a loss and they're realizing those losses and it really signifies that pain within the market. And you can see that the deeper points of these correlate with our realized loss spikes that we saw before. This is where lots of short-term holders are selling at a loss and typically we get these retests of one from the underside. So this is showing that short-term holders are selling at their cost basis. They're just willing to get their money back, get me out of the market, I will take any exit liquidity that is offered. 
So in our current situation, we saw that we had a lot of coins return to profitability. So in a bullish scenario, we would see them return to profit, which we did. They would come back, retest their cost basis, and the market would push higher. The market is able to absorb that sell side. Now, unfortunately, we've actually broken back below one, had a retest on the underside, and sold off again. So what this is showing is that short-term holders are being spooked out by this current price move. It's showing that even though they returned to profitability for a short couple of days, they have since returned back into losses. And downside price action is again mobilizing those coins and bringing them back into the exchange. So really the thing to be paying attention to is do we start to see a sustained inflow? Does this trend start to reverse back into a period of inflows much like we had back here in May? Ideally, we don't want to see that, but that would be a signal that is a more bearish case. Conversely, if we see it start to trend back down into the downside and outflows happen, that would be more constructive. Do we see our balance on exchanges tick higher? Not so great. Trending lower? That would be constructive. When we look at our realized cap hodl waves, we want to see this typically move into a downtrend and more or less sustain these very low values of these young coins that show that there's accumulation going on. If we start to see an uptrend, that means that those older coins are coming back into circulation. They're selling into whatever exit liquidity they can take, and that would probably be accompanied by a reduction in our long-term hold supply. Both of those we don't really want to see. And again, with our on-chain activity, in an ideal scenario, our active entities or active addresses would start to recover. We see more people coming in, seeing value in the prices, and we see our non-zero addresses continue to reverse and climb back to the upside. Again, a more bearish scenario would be if both of these still languish, even start to pull off and roll, roll over, that would show that there are users overall leaving the network and would be a more bearish scenario. So thanks for tuning in. Please make sure to give us a subscribe and a like. It really does help our channel get more views. Hopefully you found this nice and useful. We're looking at a semi-quiet market. It's it's a little bit bearish out there when it comes to the on-chain activity. The market's a little bit uncertain, not really sure how to deal with the current situation. We're seeing that equilibrium of coins flowing in and out of exchanges. And really, short-term holders appear to be the most fearful cohort. Long-term holders are more or less hanging onto their coins and not doing a great deal with them, whereas the short-term holders appear to be buying but then getting spooked and flushing out again. So that's really the cohort that we want to be paying close attention to. A powerful tool to do this is our Realize Cap Hollow Waves and filter it down for the short-term holders. A constructive sign is a downtrend in these metrics. We want to see these trending lower, which means young coins are moving into old hands and they're going through that coin maturation process. A more bearish case is if we see this start to climb again, which shows that old coins are being spent and that means that there's a loss of conviction in some of those longer term holders. So really the metric to be paying attention to that I would recommend would be the realized cap hodl waves and we're looking for that change in trend overall, particularly of the younger coin cohort. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to give us a like and let us know what you enjoyed in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.